Hello guys, so five simple questions that dentists usually have in their dental clinics, but they are also useful for exams, okay? And they are about caries today, so very important topic. So question one, what is the best material choice for a posterior tooth with cusps compromised with caries and under a heavy load? So now we have two different conditions, okay? The tooth is compromised, the cusps are compromised with caries. And then the antagonist tooth is, for example, monolithic zirconia. So there is a heavy load, okay? Uh, monolithic zirconia is a good example. We have um, uh, more than 1,000 megapascal of flexural strength. So there you have it. Which is the best option among these four options, of course? Because we might have, and we actually have, other uh, options even better than these ones. But we need to, to choose the best one here among those four options that the question is giving to you guys. So the first one is amalgam. Well, amalgam has some me mechanical resistance, but the cusps are now compromised. You want some cusp coverage. So that's not the ideal situation. So amalgam is not actually the, the best answer here. Then we have direct composite resin. And then you guys might be saying that we have new materials with enhanced uh, flexural strength and mechanical resistance. But direct composite resin, if we have an antagonist tooth of zirconia and the cusps have caries, uh, you know, it's a not favorable situation for resin and it's not the best option either for this case, all right? Uh, letter C, direct filling gold. So this is the very old method of gold in which we need to mechanically shape the gold with a hammer or something. So it, it's no longer in use and it's not the best option either here. It's a direct restoration method. So the correct answer is letter D, cast gold. Okay, you need cusp coverage, you need to cast your restoration, then cast gold is a very good option. Of course, it's more expensive, there is um, uh, other advantage, advantages here, drawbacks and advantages. But among those four options, that's the correct answer, and this was the correct answer for this question, okay? So in this question, question one, the correct answer is D. Don't forget that these questions are taken from previous exams, board exams of dentistry from different countries, okay? Now question two. For class two cavities, an onlay is indicated when the so when the patient presents higher caries index, so this is um, one of the uh, answers here. And of course, this is not the correct answer, right? So this is not one of the criteria to select an onlay. The caries risk is important of the patient, but it's not related to the type of restoration, at least in, uh, with the conditions presented by the question, okay? Now, the opposing tooth has full coverage. Well. If the opposing tooth has full coverage, it doesn't say anything to you that you need to choose an onlay or not. Uh, what is important is the occlusion. If you have XL load in canine guidance, in letter excursion or group function, and you know the, the uh, uh, balanced uh, force between both sides, and you know th this is important. Uh, if the opposing tooth has full coverage, it, this is not one of the criteria to choose an onlay to the to the tooth that you are rehabilitating. So. It's not the correct answer either. Letter C, then yes, dentino support of cusps is questionable. And now you want some cusp coverage, that's why you go for an onlay. Okay, so that's one of the criteria to choose onlay instead of a direct restoration, for example. So in this case, letter C is the correct answer. Letter D, when the need for extra retention exists, this is not one of the reasons to select onlay instead of other types of restorations, okay? So letter C is the correct answer of question two. Let's go then uh, <clears throat> for question three. Primary prevention includes the following, except, so now we are going for the, we are trying to find the incorrect answer here. Uh, planning the patient's diet, that's correct. Okay, so this is one of the important aspects related to the risk of caries and everything. So planning the patient's diet is actually something important for the prevention, for preventive dentistry. And this is one of the correct answers. So not the answer that you are looking for. Letter B, prophylactic uh, odontomy. And uh, this is also one of the options discussed previously. So 
let's consider that this is not the uh, answer that we are looking for either. Uh, topic, topical application of a fluoride, letter C. Well, this is something also very useful in preventive dentistry. So letter C is also something that you want to do it. So it's not one of the correct answers. Uh, it's not the incorrect answer that you try to find here. And then letter D, extending cavity preparation to prevent recurrence. This is absolutely not something that you want to do as primary prevention. So that's the answer that you should select. The correct answer, which is the incorrect statement, is the letter D, okay, for question three. Uh, question four, popo irritation is not expected from any restorative material if provided that the minimal thickness of the material is 0.2 millimeters, 0.5 millimeters, 2 millimeters or 3 millimeters. And here we are talking about the classic literature. So it, it was considered always that from 2 millimeters uh, you don't have this risk. Okay, so 2 millimeters is the correct answer here, letter C. But uh, the literature, you should always check the current articles because this information uh, is always updated by science, by the literature, okay? Uh, but here, letter C was the correct um, answer for this question from, again, one of the dental board exams from one of the countries that we uh, discuss here in the YouTube channel, Understanding Dentistry. Last question, last but not least, which of these must not be placed in contact with PMMA, with acrylic resin, as it may inhibit resin polymerization, okay? Uh, letter A, zinc phosphate cement. That's absolutely not the case. Zinc, uh, zinc phosphate can be even used as a base, for example. So no, zinc oxide eugenol cement. That's the correct answer. This one will prevent the curing the polymerization of the resin, and therefore, that's the answer that you should mark. Uh, question five, the correct answer is B, okay? Calcium hydroxide distilled water paste is uh, not um, something that will prevent the, the curing of the material, and all of the above, therefore, is also incorrect, okay? So, question five, the correct answer is B, okay? So, nice questions for you to always update your knowledge your dental knowledge for you to always be prepared for your dental clinic or for your dental faculty, your university if you are a dental student. So stay tuned for the next videos and see you guys later.